Good evening, everybody. So today's session is something I have been looking forward to, because here in this session, we will get to know how well you understood whatever we have been learning so far. We have done almost uh, 15 sessions so far on different topics. Still, a uh, lot more remains untouched. It is like an ocean. So the more we learn, the more we understand or we come to know that there is still more to be learned. And it doesn't uh, take a few days or few sessions to cover the entire uh, grammar of any particular language, not only English. But still we will make all possible attempts to do that in this session and also in the sessions to come. And please post whatever questions or doubts you have. Let us see. And as I've already told you, don't feel shy and hesitant to ask your questions. And it's not only you who is going to be benefited, it's the whole group. Sometimes some people may have the same doubt, but they may not ask. So actually you're helping the entire group. Don't think that, okay, what a silly question to ask. What uh, will the others think if I post this question? No such thing should occupy your mind now. Because these are opportunities you get very rarely. All along we have been sticking on to a particular topic for each session. But now it is a session wholly or solely designed only to have your questions and your doubts cleared. Even when we are talking about a particular question or doubt somebody has Ask the others can also keep posting your questions. I want your active participation. I have also got something else to say, but it is your opportunity now. So grab it, seize it. Common errors in English or common doubts in English uh, cannot be dealt with in one hour or a few hours. It's so vast. In the meantime, we can also talk about, till you post your questions, let us not waste time. Very often, we would have heard about usage like, walkable distance, but we don't have this usage. We ask you know, people, where is your house? No, it's a walkable distance from here, they say. But actually, we don't have this word at all. It should be walking distance. And there are some words in English where we don't have a separate plural form. The singular and the plural, we have the same word like furniture certain things I might have already mentioned in the other classes but still there's no harm in repeating and there may be some people who might not have attended those sessions so furniture sometimes we even see furnitures on the name boards of shops but it is wrong all kinds of furnitures are available here is not the correct way of saying furniture is both singular and plural then we have scenery not sceneries it is actually scenery then we have words like information luggage baggage you don't use this these words by adding yes never come across them like informations or luggages or baggages it's always this and do we have questions could you tell there's a question from Karthik could you tell the format for letter writing in formal and informal format as per uh, new changes 
can we take that uh, sudhi because it's letter writing no so huh? what is uh, what what does kartik mean by the new changes aware of the new changes being brought uh, brought about in formal letter we don't start with from and to we just mention it on the top right the date and the place and then we start with addressing no dear whoever it is a formal letter has to start with from to and remember not to put a comma here this is wrong after from and to this there's no comma right and there's another uh, thing that we commonly find when we close the letter you write yours faithfully or yours sincerely there may be some people who put an apostrophe here or there wherever no it's very generous and with commas and apostrophes so it's not like that no apostrophe anywhere and a comma definitely here and here we write the place and the date definitely we have the this 23 okay letter writing format i don't think there's much to discuss you in a formal letter we start with from to and then the subject the address then comes the body of the letter we don't even divide it into many paragraphs unless and this uh, needed then we close it with a salutation see another thing to be mentioned is if you're going to write thank you remember to put a full stop if it is thanking you is a comma so these punctuation marks please keep in mind has kartik mentioned about the new changes you know ma'am can you give some idea which topic choose first in ibp is no I mean what is the oh, main exam in english section what's that the topic in which section do they mean please be more specific when you ask the question can we go back to the question uh, section also is reading comprehension okay mm. then there are some more questions is that the one he is referring to hmm? general uh, general essays okay whatever it is bank exam or ibps or whatever exam whenever you are asked to write on on uh, I mean an essay on anything what do we normally do we choose a topic which we are comfortable with some people may be uh, aware of what's going on around uh, they may be reading the newspapers regularly updating themselves with the current affairs so if you are one such person you can choose a current topic or the general ones the general ones will always be there no which based on ebola economy this that's what i would have already always done choosing topics which i am comfortable with where i can provide more con content you 
Seven is trivial. Ah, okay, okay. Ah, English section in the way. Of course, of course, it's the English section. See, these are uh, things which you already <laughs> uh, know what to do. Like, we choose topics which we are there topics like uh, more scoring and less scoring. I don't believe. See, there, there may be some people who say, no, choose this topic. They may fetch you more marks. But it's not uh, on the topic always. It's about how well you present whatever you know. We cannot beat up around the bush, no? Saying the same thing over and over again and then uh, confusing the whole thing. So it's not the topic that matters. It's how well you present whatever you know. Otherwise, no, the to those topics will not be given in that category. You cannot expect everybody to choose the question or the topic which fetches more marks. That's not possible. Yes. Waiting for more questions from you. See, these are more general questions. We have uh, error correction for the for which you need to learn a lot of topics in grammar. Revise them again and again. Not only the competitive exam that you are clearing. It's also something else beyond that. <laughs> so how many have logged in? No. Okay. There were nine people. We can make it very interactive. There's another common error, say no. I came by foot is wrong. We use a wrong preposition. We we say I came by bus, I came by car is right, but I came on foot is right. So it's on foot. These are some of the common mistakes we make. Ma'am, could you please explain where to use preposition while speaking? So, what is a preposition? First of all, it brings out the relationship between a noun and something else in a sentence. So, in, on, at, from, to, with, between, all these are prepositions. Where to use prepositions? Everywhere. We need them. And the change of one preposition changes the entire meaning of the sentence. Sometimes, well, let's, let me see. Mm. The chairman and his team were present. This is a normal sentence. The chairman and his team were present. We use a plural verb. Instead, if you say, if you use a preposition, the chairman with his team, the meaning doesn't change much, you see, but the verb does change. This was present. The chairman with his team was present. Both the sentences mean the same thing, but the use of a preposition here changes the use of the verb. Other than that, even the other sentence I said, no, on foot, and what is the time, by your watch, all these are prepositions which we are not 
very familiar with I have the same doubts when I am going to write something okay we have a question mainly uh, I am facing the problem in the case of paper writing tasks so all the time I prefer any cheap essay writing service for my for my assignments I don't know is it good or not but still I am doing it that's okay see a beginner will always depend on other external sources no that's quite natural but there should come a stage where you also start writing on your own regardless of the mistakes you commit then you can refer a good grammar book find out what mistakes you've committed then later on even without the assistance of a grammar book or uh, any other person you will be able to write good essays good projects on your own that is how everyone does mainly for how to avoid stammering while speaking speak more the 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 solution to any problem is do more of it if you are afraid to walk in the dark walk more in the dark <laughs> then you will get rid of the fear i have come across many people who have had this problem of stammering but now after many years i meet them no i cannot even believe that this was the person who was stammering in the school days my own benchmate i met after 22 23 years now he is speaking wonderfully no stammering at all so first thing you have to believe that it is possible then it doesn't stop there then everybody can just say no here it's possible it's possible the next thing is action first believe that it is possible to avoid stammering to get rid of that then you practice you put yourself into action can you tell me if i use they meaning what i said before is correct what is it can you tell me if i use they meaning what i said before is correct for example these behaviors the ones now behavior cannot be used with yes it's always behavior like the other list of words i just wrote on the board no information scenery luggage behavior is also one such word no yes hmm okay i'll consider ah uh, now how can you make it plural if you are talking about the behavior of different persons then you can say these kinds of behavior still you don't add yes to behavior but you are introducing a new word now here you add the plural yes like already we said no three cups of coffee we add yes here and not to coffee or tea because this always remains the same they are uncountable nouns we don't add yes okay these behavior are considered insane they are associated to in this case actually i don't understand the question at all they can be used to refer behavior or i must use it 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 you have to use the pronoun it can we overcome stammering by reading books than by speaking now how is it possible stammering occurs when you speak no so try to speak that may be even because of the fear in the midst of people read when you read all alone at home sometimes there may not be any stammering at all because you know very well that there is nobody around but reading is also good you can hear your own voice your own pronunciation the tone the volume everything you can check there's a good practice to read aloud 
but don't stop with that go to the next uh, step of speaking with people we have another question how both the same in meaning hi everybody okay uh, we'll try not to do it again will not try to do it again no they are not the same slightly different see uh, even in our own mother tongue we have such expressions where it, see on the surface it means the same but the way we express it no i will i will try not to do it again is more emphatic than saying i will not try to do it again see the meaning is not very uh, different but still there is a degree of variation i will try not to do it again is more emphatic you are more specific what mistakes do we usually commit while using prepositions a lot of mistakes we might have uh, had that in common errors also like the famous between between 10 211 is wrong it's always between and whenever you use between it should be followed by and it's only form 10 211 is right then instead of cut the vegetables with this knife is right but as some people may use by which is wrong the instrument with which we do we use with by normally denotes the person who does or the agent yes how to gain command over simple english you have to put in a lot of effort which you will love doing it you have to select activities which you love doing like reading simple story books even wa watching english movies writing about simple things and reading them aloud to your own group of friends there are many activities may, see many people may suggest many things but you decide which ones you are comfortable with how to overcome consciousness while speaking by doing more of it or you can even stand before a mirror look at yourself the way uh, you make your gestures your facial expressions again the tone the volume the pronunciation the pause everything you can see no if you stand before a mirror this is an age old practice we've heard it being said by almost every speaker where use they and when use those For example they are prayers and those are players ah here what difference and how they is a personal pronoun it stands for a plural noun those is both an adjective as well as a pr pronoun if you say those children those children are my friends okay here this is an adjective 
and we use those when we talk about people or things which are far from us these we use when those people or things are near so these and those are demonstrative adjectives those is the plural of that this we have these but if you simply say those are players then here it is a pronoun here it is an adjective because it talks about the noun yeah there is some difference if you say they are players or those are players those indicates that they are not near they are far those are my neighbors these are my relatives just the proximity yes where to use almost around mostly yes almost you are almost right if i say what do i mean you are not right i'm almost i have almost reached your house when can we say when somebody asks us no where are you when we are on the way we say i have almost reached your house means you have still not reached but you are about to hmm? your answer is almost right means it is not right around around we use for many things for time places this around the corner come around meet you around 5 o'clock so approximately there's a meaning around not exactly there's a, there's a lot of difference between i will meet you at 5 and i will meet you around 5 at 5 means sharp around means you can come before 5 minutes before 5 or 5 minutes after 5 to 10 minutes after 5 hmm? around revolving around mostly hmm mostly is a very common word mostly people don't have doubts about mostly say 99% we say no mostly these people speak hindi which means the majority of them they speak mostly in english or most of the time hmm? best books for improving vocabulary yeah, you need to have a good grammar book every time i keep mentioning about ren and martin because it's a very good basic book to start with there are so many other books also by other authors but let me tell you only if you have completed the basic ones you will find the other advanced books useful and thesaurus collins thesaurus webster's thesaurus roger's thesaurus where you have the synonyms and antonyms so you should learn how to use a dictionary learn how to use a thesaurus and also daniel jones the pronouncing dictionary where only the pronunciation is given and again you have to read more you you have to cultivate the habit of reading read anything a newspaper or a magazine or a story book or science fiction or anything but read more and more where to use perhaps probably yes when you are not very sure of that perhaps i may visit you next week which means you are not sure of that of the plan perhaps it will rain today just a guess the possibility is there but the certainty is not there same way probably probably she may pass in first class so the probably the word probably itself has the clue the probability or possibility is there but you are not very sure or certain of it the opposite you can say when you are more certain you can say certainly definitely exactly absolutely we use these words when we are very sure of it 
is another question when to use could and could have yes how to overcome fear before speaking to a large number of people first you speak to a small uh, group of people then you will be able to speak to a larger group could and could have yes we will see that when you speak this sentence she could have passed okay continue she could have passed the exam you know for sure that she did not pass the exam i could have met you yesterday when do we say that sentence when you did not meet the person you could have asked me when do we say that when the person did not actually ask so could have we use for a situation that did not happen when we regret also i could have spent more time with you which means i did not spend more time with you but i could have hmm? so that is the meaning of could have could is normally we we use for the past tense she could use she could swim when she was young she could speak fluently i could travel i could walk miles earlier which means i am not able to do now so you are talking about a past condition but we also use could especially in requests when we want to make it more polite could you please pass the sort pass the exam it is certainly different from saying she could have passed the exam she could have passed the exam is just uh, talking about the possibility of her passing the exam she could have done it but she didn't do it okay but when you say she should have passed the exam then you are more particular that means you feel uh, bad about it hmm? you should have met me yesterday when do we say that when we regret for not having met the person okay we go over to the next question where to use ought mm. ought is the strongest of these three words ought should must all these three indicate necessity or obligation you should respect your elders you must respect your elders you ought to respect your elders when we use ought you should add to you say you ought to you ought to listen to him here it is more strong meaning than using should or must you mu you should listen to him you must listen to him but when you say you ought to listen to him it means there's no other go you have to yeah have to so they expressing necessity or obligation but of all the these words ought is the strongest yes how to identify a subject verb agreement in a sentence we did a whole uh, session on that again it is a vast topic the verb has to agree with the subject in number in gender uh, in number and in person say the first person second person third person i hope you know i we so this is the table the person first person second person and third person and in the simple present tense we have certain rules simple past nothing for a, for all the pronouns we use this same verb let's say i write so i we 
u big for all these four mm. i v u they we don't add yes we should not in the simple present tense if it is he she or it we should add yes this is the most common of subject verb agreement errors in the simple present it is like this simple past i wrote we wrote he wrote she wrote they wrote no change at all future also no change and again in the present continuous we use we have different rules i am writing we use am only for i i am writing then for we you they we use are we are writing they are playing she mm, he she it yes he he is sleeping she is singing so remember it's only a few of the tenses no um, which have these changes otherwise like uh, simple past simple future past perfect then uh, future continuous future perfect future perfect continuous all these uh, tenses no change at all with reference to the subject it's only the simple present present continuous present perfect where to use has and have again the same i we you they we use have he she it we use has see it's a very vast topic subject verb agreement this is the most basic but apart from this there are many more rules like the one i said for the other example where we talked about prepositions the chairman with his men the chairman with his men was present it's not were present because it is a rule when we have those phrases like with or as well as the chairman as well as his team as well as his members was present and then each every or each of each of the boys is given a prize so here you have to be very careful with the subject you should know which one is the subject each is the subject so we use is so don't be carried away by the noun you find nearer which may be plural it may be misleading but be careful to see which is the proper subject in a sentence do we have any other questions uh keep where is it for the back the positive verbs what role does body language play will come in yes could and would okay <laughs> body language it always gives you away you can't be one person and then project another person outside whatever is there comes out even if you are aware of it or not so we cannot practice and uh, always be conscious of the gestures or the expressions we make unless we do it within somehow or the other it comes out so you have to work more on the inner self then you need not be worried about the body language at all if you are very sure of what is inside it will be reflected outside you cannot put on a false expression sit in a different posture for so long somehow it comes out in a short interview maybe <laughs> you can escape but in the long run it's better to work more on yourself yes ah huh. causative verbs hmm. i don't know how to repair car so i'm having mind repair yes having something done and get something done are both used to refer hmm. yes see it's more to do with the passive form
but you are not the person who is actively doing it i don't know how to repair cars so i'm having mine repaired at the garage round the corner i really must get my eyes tested yes get your hair cut we don't say i'm going to cut my hair <laughs> there's a normal common error because we are not going to cut no we are going to have the hair cut get your hair cut have your hair cut the difference is between okay non causative uses of you be has yes see we, you you have something done but you are not the person actively doing it you are not the cause any this is the last question i saw something okay hmm i got my legs burnt yes difference between could and would are there are any difference between while until unless of course would is more casual would you please um would you please help me could you please help me could you is more polite than saying would you but we use both that's the only difference when we make mistake when we make requests would is the past tense of will could is the past tense of can in a different sense when we talk about past tense otherwise in requests could is more polite than would while it's the um duration see when let me write while i was driving doing during some action while i was driving i fell asleep so you talk about an action that's happening during something else while we were watching tv it started raining or while we were playing it started raining so while means during that it talks about the the process of action during normally we use this past continuous tense when we use while in the past we don't say while i drove no while i drove i fell asleep is wrong it is while i was driving or in the present while i am reading while i am studying i don't focus on anything else so you talk about an action that continues for a period of time it's only then we use while until until is the same as till till a point of time until until i arrive don't leave or even wait wait until 4 o'clock hmm? here it is a preposition here it is a conjunction okay unless unless expresses condition unless you work hard you will not pass sometimes people uh, commit an error here where they also add the word not with unless which is where the mistake arises unless you work hard means if you do not work hard you shouldn't say unless you do not work hard but there is an unless you do not work hard you will not fail should be the sentence but we don't make it so complicated so unless means if you do not if not unless you come on time we will be late unless you ask more questions i cannot help you unless you read more unless you speak more you cannot improve your vocabulary 
which means if you do not okay any other questions where to use pros and cons what are such kind of word pairs called I don't know word pairs what are they called but pros and cons are the points for and against both sides weighing um, both the two sides of the same coin we say no points favoring and points against but these uh, see this one we don't use it in a formal context the pros and cons it's more informal if your doubts are, are not answered okay right <laughs> how to use words like for since have been yes this one also we uh, discussed earlier for we use for a period of time and since point of time just remember this when we talk about the period of time the duration of time it should be for I have been studying for three hours she has been sleeping for two hours so it's three hours two hours is a period of time since we use a point of time since morning since yesterday since last month since 2000 we can never say since two days since three hours it's wrong why two days three hours these are periods of time duration we have to use only for so let, let, we can also write some examples uh, she has been sick for two days two days is a period of time the same sentence if you want to use since it should be she has been sick since Monday Monday you say it's a point of time it cannot be since two days definitely not for Monday that won't make sense but many times people make this mistake of saying if somebody asks you know, how long have you been working uh, in this company then the person may reply since three years which is wrong you should not say since three years for three years or if you have already said the word since remember to use the point of time since 2012 since April right or since 10 o'clock I've been sitting here hmm? there's a specific point of time okay uh, as a conjunction can be used while unless until for the same purpose while unless and until do we use these words for the same purpose as a conjunction no while is just about time whereas while until is also about time but these cannot be exchanged unless talks about condition if whether unless these are words expressing condition okay oh. okay I'm sure you might have you uh, got some of your questions answered and if a few of the, your questions remain unanswered as Sudhir has pointed it you will be sent the answers uh, through mail okay and do we need another session for this today okay see if you have more questions you plan for it in advance note down your questions you see for yourself if the questions are okay are not covered in the sessions so far if for that you need to go back and watch but is it possible is it, huh? to go back and watch the videos okay then you may get some more new questions just note them down in your notebook and in the next class we can answer those questions
I don't know as of now where when and we will have the next class but still I repeatedly ask each one of you to put in a lot of effort to read more and more and also to create exercises writing exercises speaking exercises you can create a group among yourselves choose a topic and speak because today's session I saw many of you asking about speaking how to overcome fear how to avoid stammering how to speak to a large group of people hmm? so these things will come only with practice doesn't happen overnight but no problem you can start it even from today okay right all the very best to all of you meet you in the next session bye